Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNoFoto.com and in today's video we're going to be kind of wrapping up and uh, putting, putting into practice the good stuff we've been learning about the um, Spider 4 Pro uh, monitor calibration device that I've done um, some videos with over the, uh, over the last few weeks. Um, the Spider 4 Pro, if you haven't seen the videos already, is a device which measures the colours and brightness, luminosity of your, uh, of your laptop screen or your monitor and then adjusts the profile that the video card uses to run that monitor so you get truer colours. The idea being is that you can make sure that the colour casts that um, completely naturally introduce themselves into your monitor over time or maybe they were even there from the time uh, you bought it um, uh, can be can be accounted for and uh, your monitor can be brought back into a state where it's um, it's really showing uh, as best it can um, the, the true colours um, if you've seen the if you've already watched the videos you'll know but just to do a quick recap as well Basically, um, I use the Spider 4 Pro to calibrate my laptop monitor and this old um, uh, uh, LG Flaptron monitor. Um, but what I found was during this process as well is, in fact, the old Flaptron monitor uh, displays a much wider gamut of the colours available than my, uh, my laptop monitor. So this is actually the better one for um, doing editing on because this will give me, I think this gives something like 98% of the colours available where this screen only gives me about, um, I think it's 70%. Um, when you look at the two monitors, I know it's difficult for you to see here because the monitors are at different angles, they look incredibly similar, the colours on both, but if I want true colour recognition I'm better you know, using this, maybe using this as edit and use this for my second monitor actually look at the pictures. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be kind of putting everything into practice and with the fact that we've calibrated these monitors so that they produce true colours um, and we're going to be taking um, some product shots of two well-known to British people anyway products so you should recognise the colours. We've got Bisto Gravy and we've got a tin of Heinz beans. If you're working in a commercial environment where you're taking pictures of these things or, or, or any, any product or, or any body to be honest where the reproduction of that colour is, is inherently important to, say, the advert. You know, if you produce a picture of, for an advert of a tins of Heinz beans and the colour was different from the packet, you know, the client wouldn't be very happy, people would be a bit confused, wouldn't they? And similarly, when you're actually taking pictures of people as well, is if the skin tones aren't the right, right colour, if they aren't the same colour, then people might not know straight away they, uh, that there's something wrong, but it's that kind of thing where you say, you know, I can't tell you what a incorrectly coloured photo looks like, but I can spot one that is correctly coloured. You know, because all of a sudden, it, you know, it tends to pop off the screen, or pop off, pop off the paper. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, um, firstly, we're going to be taking a couple of pictures, well, one picture of these two products. Um, I'm going to be using a very simple grey card um, just to make sure we get the white balance right. Then we're going to be importing those pictures. We're going to be looking at them. In Lightroom we're going to be using the data from the shop with the uh, with the grey card in to correct any colour casts and then we'll be off to be seeing true colours on the monitors and then I'm going to be printing out a photograph using my Canon 5550 printer and then we're just really going to be comparing the the colours on the photograph with the colours on the screens and the colours of the actual products and so we can actually see you know how close we can get and how much um, better it would be than if it was not calibrated although well, that's a little bit difficult because in order to do that I would have to do things um, without a calibrated system where obviously here we are but I just wanted to show you kind of the whole process that you could go through very simply at home really just to make sure um, that your colours are going to pop off the screen because they're going to be correct um, okay so without further ado let's move the camera around and you know take a couple of shots of the uh, the Heinz baked bean tin and the Bisto gravy um, and then we can really crack on. Okay so this is the shot I'm going to be taking of my um, baked bean tin and my uh, Bisto tin um, 
and what I'm going to be using, I'm going to use an on-camera flash just to pop that in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of photos, one of the um, the tin and the uh, the, 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 the uh, Bisto tin by itself, and then one with my basic uh, grade card in there so I can correct for uh, any white balance issues. So um, without further ado, um, let's do that. So I'll just stop the video now and then uh, crack on. Okay, so we've taken the picture and I've imported the photos into Lightroom. So I'm kind of editing the photos here on my laptop, but hopefully back here you can see my, my main um, my main monitor. Now I know this one produces and um, um, reproduces more of the proper gamut of the colours of the uh, sRGB colour space I'm working in. So whenever I need a reference for a colour, I shouldn't really be taking too much interest in my laptop screen because it only produces about 70%, where this does, I think, about 97%. But already, remember, these are these are colour calibrated monitors. And because I took the photos with flash with my camera set to the flash white balance, the white balance and the colours should be pretty much there already anyway and in fact if I hold the tin abisto up to here now there will be obviously a difference in brightness because you've got this was taken with a bright flash and we're not under a bright flash now but I could, could increase the exposure to show that but already if you look at that again it'd be difficult to see on the video but the yellow of the bisto and the yellow on the photograph is pretty close and the Heinz beans color although it's brighter um, the colour itself um, is is pretty pretty good. Now we can make sure the white balance really is spot on. Well, if we load up this picture here, this is my um, my kind of uh, white balance card. And all you're really doing when you when you're correcting white balance is you're just selecting an area in, in Lightroom. Basically, you go to the white balance um, colour picker and you're just picking an area of the, of the photo that should be a neutral colour which is a grey. Now this can be a little bit confusing. You think well what do they mean by neutral? Well all it means is that if you were to go into Photoshop or a colour analysing program and look at this this um, this colour, the red, the green and the blue channels, what the colour is made of, would always be the same value. So it doesn't really mean it matter if it's black, if it's grey or if it's white or any shade in between. As long as all those values are round are, are the same and you won't be able to see it here but I've put the little eyedropper over this grey and the red is 53 the green is 51 and the blue is 52 so they're, you know they're pretty damn close um, the white is pretty you know so I could choose any of these but I'll click what I'll do is if I click on the grey now the color should have will have slightly changed just slightly changed because um, it was pretty much there anyway and then what I can then do is I can then copy this setting here and I just want to copy the white balance over. Um, I check none, just say white balance. And I copy that. And then I can go to my other photo here. And then I can paste. Again, you probably find this difficult to see on the monitor, but I can then paste that white balance in here. And this is how you can do one sort of test photo, if you like, in a lighting situation with, with a proper grey card or like a, a, a homemade one like, like I've done. To make sure you can correct a white balance for a whole series of photos so now we can really see that these um <laughs> that the colors are very close um i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'm going to turn down the exposure a little bit just to see if we can get it spot on let's have a look let's just turn that down a little bit the idea being that obviously this was taken with a bright sorry the photo was taken with a bright flash i think we're almost there let's just take it down a a slight nudge again so I've, I've darkened that down quite a bit now so that looks pretty that looks pretty close to me let's have a look at the tin of beans that looks it's probably slightly brighter still let's just take it down a nudge a nudge more let's have a look yeah I'd say that that's pretty close there and that's pretty close there so I'm pretty happy with the colours and the reproduction I've managed to do. And again, remember, I can trust what I'm doing with these monitors. This one more than this one, because again, the big monitor has reproduces a better select, uh, range of the colour gamut available. But I'm pretty happy with that. So what I can do now is I'm going to uh, 
I'm probably going to crop the photo actually so we get more of it in and then I'm going to print it out and then we can compare the photos just to see how how close they are okay so that's it we kind of done it we've been through the whole process and um, yeah, it's really it's been really easy and um, really good so I did uh, I ended up doing two prints the first one where I darken the screens down to match the kind of luminescence if you like of the um, the, the products um, the, the print actually came out too dark so then I kind of had to think about it and thought well yeah, it doesn't really make sense does it you can't the, 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 the screens are, are shining light out aren't they and shining colors out um, whereas with your print um, it's just it's just reflecting stuff so it kind of makes sense to kind of to, to stick with what the calibrated screen said and the, and print it out from there um, and then and see if that matches in fact when I did that the, the color matches are incredibly good on the um, on the products themselves again it's probably it's very difficult probably for you to see this but you know that the, the red and the yellow on the bisto and the green you know they're pretty much pretty much identical um, and again that kind of turquoisey bluesy green of the Heinz baked bean tin um, is, is very very good as well and the colors although obviously we've got difference in luminosity difference in, in brightness because we've got the monitor which shines light out and the um, and the photograph which just reflects light and it's it's not that bright in here I'm just using a, a little LED light and a, and a bulb um, the colors are incredibly similar um, especially when you kind of look at the yellows and then like the oranges uh, and the blues so and a lot basically a lot of that is down to you know this little device the, the, the spider 4 pro from data color because it's enabled me to calibrate both of these monitors um, which means that I can trust the colors that they're reproducing and by using a simple gray card I can make sure that I'm not introducing any color casts in the capture process um, which means that as I go through to the print process the kind of the end product if you like I know that everything's uh, going to match up now this is a very basic setup for calibrating at the capture and the print process because it's been done in a bit of an ad hoc way because the only thing that I know is is um, very well calibrated are the screens because I haven't calibrated my monitor and the only way I've calibrated my um, camera, the, the 600D that I record this on, is via using a very simple grey card. Now, if we want to take it to the step further to make sure it's a completely calibrated process, we would be using a, um, a colour chart um, to check um, the colours at point of capture. And we'd also be using a, monitor, a printer calibration tool at the end as well to create a Catamaran profile but hopefully what I've shown you here through this series of videos about the Spider 4 Pro and this kind of end one where we kind of put it all together is that this is something that's very important for even amateur photographers if you want your colours to really pop off the screen and it's pretty much uh, essential for professional photographers now hopefully <laughs> those kind people at Data Colour um, will send me to look at to review and do some video guides for the, the capture calibration stuff they do and the printer calibration they do uh, but if they don't it doesn't matter I think we've shown here that even with something like the Spider 4 Pro you can really get a professional setup at home that really uh, enables you to produce photos that, that especially you know color photos that, that, that pop off the screen and pop off the print because you know quite simply the colors are right my name's Rob from robnumphoto.com. Remember, you can email me, scalespeeder at gmail.com. Um, if you like the video, please make a comment down below. If you've got any questions, um, subscribe to the channel as well. And uh, maybe, hopefully, pretty soon, I'll see you on Flickr. Thanks for watching.